Hello everybody and welcome back to the Jurassic Collectibles YouTube channel. You are joining me, Tom Jurassic, here today for a look at the largest Lego Jurassic World slash Jurassic Park set to date. So this is set 75936 Jurassic Park T-Rex Rampage. It weighs in at over 2,000 pieces. It retails for £220 here in the United Kingdom. And we get our massive brick-built T-Rex, the brick-built Jurassic Park gates, and six characters. So taking a look at the front of the box, if we just bring our brightness up a little bit, you can see that beautiful, beautiful Jurassic Park gate there. The Lego and Jurassic World logos alongside the T-Rex Rampage. You can see all of the minifigures in the bottom corner. We'll have a closer look at those. They are Ian Malcolm, Ray Arnold, John Hammond, Ellie Sattler, Alan Grant and Dennis Nedry. We then of course have got the massive T-Rex itself which forms the bulk of the set. And you can see that this is absolutely one massive box. This really, really is one of the largest Jurassic toys I think we have received in recent memory. Uh, so I am really, really excited to be taking a look at this toy with you. So on the back of the box, we have got a breakdown of all of the play features included. You can see again, we have got that absolutely fantastic T-Rex model there, looking really, really cool. We have got the back of the Jurassic Park gates, which are open. We've got the Lego logo 75936. We have got Dennis Nedry and the Barbasol can alongside the scene in the film. We can see the mechanism which allows the gates to open. We have got Ray Arnold and his computer station. We have then got John Hammond uh, recreating the famous dessert scene. Ellie Sattler in the breaker shed. And Ian Malcolm lying inside the emergency bunker in the iconic scene that is affectionately referred to as Sexy Malcolm. Now we do also have Alan Grant at the bottom discovering the hatched Velociraptor eggs. And we do have the toilet which Gennaro finds himself on, although he is not included in this particular set. And zooming back out to once again take a look at that, we will bring the brightness down a little bit for you guys. You can see again um, an absolutely massive box here. I really am having to zoom all of the way out to take a look at this box. So very, very impressive uh, presence from this box. And looking at the side of the box, we do have the T-Rex here, which looks fantastic in the similar uh, caged-in fashion to the other sets. And we do also have our cast of minifigures alongside the display pack, um, Stand Even and the Baby Velociraptor, which is included in this set. And we can see on the far end there that John Hammond is the figure used for the 1-1 scaling. And if we twist it around to the other sides very quickly. You can see on this side we just have the information and in the same box art that is on the front of the box. Nothing of a particular note on the base. And then if I twist it over, very, very heavy box. On this side we do have a scale for the T-Rex that says that this Rex is 27.3 inches long We've got the lego.com slash apps and Lego Jurassic World. Okay, so that has been a look at this absolute monster of a set in the box. I'm now going to crack it open, assemble the Jurassic Park uh, gates, assemble the T-Rex, look at the minifigures, and then come back in for you guys to give you my final verdict. Okay everyone, so we are back after a very, very long time building and you can see that we have got the absolutely massive LEGO Jurassic Park D2C set in front of us. 
and you can see my reflection there in the gate. So, we are going to take a look at the T-Rex first because it's the first thing we build, then the Jurassic Park gates, and then the minifigures and the display stand. So, let's get straight into that T-Rex. Okay, so before we even really begin to look at this T-Rex, the thing I really want to emphasise is the sheer scale. So if I bring a Lego Owen in, you can see it absolutely dwarfs that Lego figure. And if I then bring in the Lego T-Rex, which is quite large compared to Owen, you can see that it is, again, absolutely dwarfed by this massive model. So this is a really, really huge brick-built model of a T-Rex. Now, if we move the camera in a little bit closer, we're going to zoom in and take a close-up look at the head first. Just going to focus us on that. There we go, the autofocus was playing up. You can see that there are some really, really nice details on this head. So that pupil that you can see there, if I just brighten that up a bit, that pupil is actually a printed Lego piece. So that sits inside, it's on a little piece, as you can see, that can come out. But really that is set in there as kind of the eye socket, which is really cool. Now, obviously, you can see that everything here is really, really nice and smooth. And then when we come down to the jaw, we've got this really nice ability to open and close the jaw. So you can see there it's closed, there it's open. And when it is open, we have these really nice white teeth on display. Now, not only do we have those nice teeth, we also have the ability to drop a tongue down which is made using very, very small Lego pieces, which are really effective. And if I zoom us out for a second, you can see the head is on a nice ball joint, so we can get some good articulation from it, get some really nice poses, but it does still sit at a really, really great angle there. Now, coming along the body, as you can see, the absolutely great uh, detailing continues. You've got really nice smooth pieces used throughout. We have got ball jointed arms. Now these are fully articulated. They move as you would expect and you can even adjust the claws. So really, really cool detail there. And then moving along the body of the Rex, we begin to get to kind of some of the really, really cool uh, color detailing. You can see we've got light brown, dark brown and tan to really, really capture the colours of the Rex from Jurassic Park. Now we also have got grey used, as you can see on the feet there. And we then have got black used on the claws as well, which looks fantastic. And I must admit, twisting these around for you and brightening that up ever so slightly, you can see that the claws there look phenomenal. The design for these is really smart. These pieces actually start like that and then just fold all the way in. So really, really smart use of part design there. And as we come up towards what I would argue is the creature's thigh, you can see really, really thick musculature, which if we zoom out with this creature and bring down the brightness a little bit, bring the camera back, actually allows for a great range of motion, which is really, really impressive for a Lego piece. Now you can see when we centralise that back there, the dinosaur does, of course, hold its balance nicely. And then when we come down to the tail, you can see I've got the tail in this almost curved position. If I bring it around a little bit more, you can see the tail is set in this really nice curved position where each individual segment can curve around really nicely, as well as a little ball joint on this end piece here and here. So really you can get some really nice curvature going from the tail, you can use it to counterbalance poses, 
and it really allows you to get a really really cool unique profile going with this model of the Rex. If I just adjust that leg slightly and bring the camera back out, you can see that we can get some really really cool poses going with this toy. So not only is it massively scaled and really really well detailed, but it actually has a real level of functionality which is really, really impressive. Now, in addition to this, the T-Rex does also have a frog inside, which is a really nice little detail as a bit of a homage to the original Jurassic Park. So overall, if we just adjust that head there, I think that the T-Rex portion of the build is really impressive. It has a fantastic stage presence, and it's a lot better than I was initially expecting where I was initially only really excited for the gate. Um, the Rex itself really, really does shine, and it is definitely an impressive piece, which has an incredible amount of stage presence on any shelf. So the second portion of the set is the absolutely fantastic Jurassic Park gate. Now the Jurassic Park gate has got lots going, including the flame details, which are synonymous with the original design, the beautiful vertical uh, diagonal lines coming down the gate itself, the great font at the top, the angular curvature, lots of vegetation, and the fantastic Ford Explorer power line, complete with tire treads which go down the centre of the piece. Now it is worth noting as well, the sides here are incredibly angular and this is achieved through the smart use of several different Lego techniques which really allow the builders here to excel. Now we can open the gates via a mechanism on the back and I am going to demonstrate that for you now. As it should hopefully be clear with this set, it feels as though an intricate amount of detail has really gone into getting the Jurassic Park gate looking perfect. You can see so much in the way of different detail and texture that it really, really is incredibly impressive. This toy uh, model is honestly very, very awe-inspiring, very imposing. And as a product from the Lego group, it looks great. But it doesn't end there, because there is also the rear section to the gate as well. Okay, so on the back of the build, we are greeted with several different hollow sections, which enable us to reenact different sections from the original Jurassic Park film. So we're going to go in a bit closer to each of these sections, take a look at them and break down what it is that they're trying to communicate. Okay, so the first area we have is this Velociraptor nest, as you can see above. And the idea here is we can place Dr. Alan Grant coming in to investigate the hatching of the Velociraptors. Now, this is also the area where the mechanism which allows us to open the gate is centralised as well. Okay, I'm working our way down the left-hand section of the build. The first section we have is this really small section here. You can see the Barbasol can tucked back there. I've just pressed it off its stud a little bit. And the idea here is we can simply hang Dennis Nedry, if I clip him in, in place like so. So it is, if I turn the brightness down a little bit on Dennis there, recreating the scene in the original film when Dennis Nedry is falling down the waterfall, uh, falling down the stream as he attempts to escape with the Barbasol can. Now it is important to note that there is not much space in this smaller section. If I was to take Dennis and attempt to put him inside, you can see he fits but it is tight. This space is not designed for a minifigure. So this is definitely one of the smaller sections. Moving down even further, we have got one of my favourite sections on the left-hand side, 
which is the diner uh, kind of room that is in the visitor center where John Hammond sits after his dream fails and proceeds to sit and eat ice cream. So you can see we can sit Hammond in there. We have got, oh, if I can get that out, it is, as you can see, very tight. We do have this cool little piece here to simulate the jelly and each of the different ice cream, uh, ice cream, sorry, canisters does have little patterns on them to simulate different flavours of ice cream which is melting like in the film. So you can see we can place that back in there and if we grab Hammond again just refocus on there. There is also luckily in this area ample space for a minifigure to stand. So if we were to place Hammond there for example and then grab our Ellie Sattler minifigure as well you can see there is space to kind of recreate that scene from the first film. So really, really cool little uh, area there. And then lastly, on the left hand side, we do have the emergency bunker where the famous sexy Ian Malcolm scene takes place. Now you can see there are lots of canisters and things in the back rows. We have actually got a small cabinet here which is very, very hard to get inside of, but in there, there are actually simulated Spaz-12 shotguns, which is quite cool. The bed, a cargo container, a... if I can pull it off... Ah, I've only got the base of it, but there is a fire extinguisher tucked in here quite tightly. Um, you can see it's very, very fiddly. But the main focus here is a removable accessory, which is, if I can focus on it, Ellie Sattler's torch for when she goes into the emergency bunker and this will factor over into the right side so we're going to take this piece uh, take one final look here at the shelter and then move into the bunker okay so here we have got the emergency uh, power bunker you can see Ray Arnold's hand there the uh, breaker just behind it the light simulating what is powered on and off this really nice uh, grilled floor, which uses a ton of this particular Lego piece. If I focus on that for you guys quickly. This piece to create a really, really nice effect. And the idea with this room is you will take your Ellie Sattler with that flashlight and have her heading down to turn on the power and to repower Jurassic Park. So a nice little recreation of that scene as well. And continuing to go up this side, we do have the Isla Nublar control room. You can see the map of Isla Nublar, the park screen on the left with, I believe, the Ford Explorer on it, you know, um, and some other details. And we can take Ray Arnold and sit him inside ready to monitor the tour and because this is one of the bigger areas as well you can if you want take someone like Hammond and have him stood watching what Arnold is doing as well so that's quite cool and then lastly what recreation of Jurassic Park is complete without a toilet you can see here we have got the toilet that recreates the scene where Gennaro meets his fate and it is quite tight in there you may be able to fit a minifigure in there if you really, really bargain with the space. There you go. You can see we've got Alan Grant sitting on the toilet. Uh, unfortunately, this set does not include Gennaro or Muldoon for that matter. So we are unable to actually put Gennaro back in here. But on the whole, all of these little vignette pieces in the gate are really cool. And that kind of wraps up our look at the gate. Okay, and the minifigures within this set are presented within a really nice format as well. You can see we've got this great display stand. We do get one of the baby velociraptors, if I just bring that in and focus on it. You can see it looks great there. This is the same one from the original wave. And we do have six different characters. So the first character, Dennis Nedry, if we focus on him... 
just going to try and do that manually. You can see we've got this menacing grin. We've got the larger torso, the Jurassic Park logo on the yellow rain jacket, and the Jurassic Park logo on the back. That logo on the back is a little bit fuzzy, but it's still a nice detail. And we do get an alternate head where Nedry has, of course, met his fate at the hands of the Dilophosaurus. So quite a cool minifigure there. We then have got Ellie Sattler, who is exactly the same as the figure in the other Jurassic Park Lego set. The only difference is the different hairpiece, this time the ponytail. You can see the flashlight accessory there. We have got Ian Malcolm, who is brand new. He is not the same as the Bricktober pack figure. So this is Malcolm when his shirt is open. So you can see if we try and focus on that there for you. Some really nice details, some sweat marks, the leg with the bandage across, sweat marks on his face, and on his alternate torso, uh, face print even, it kind of looks shocked. So quite cool there. Really, really nice looking. Just trying to make sure we get that in focus for you guys. It's all to do with my depth of field. There we go. Then Grant, I'm not going to spend too long looking at. Again, the exact same minifigure. Still a nice likeness to Sam Neil. Uh, we have got John Hammond, who many people have wanted. Comes with the really, really nice uh, jovial Hammond facial expression, if I can focus on that. You can see that there, looks really happy. Nice torso print, nice jewel moulded arms, nice use of the... Siren piece for the amber cane and nice printing on the back. And then lastly, we have got Ray Arnold. You can see nice facial printing on the front of the minifigure. Nice use of the Jurassic Park logo, really detailed torso, looks great. And then on the back, nice printing. The legs and the coat are printed all the way around, which is a nice touch. And he does have an alternate shocked face, which may be when he meets his fate within the power bunker. So really great minifigures overall. And if I just clear them all off of the stand, you can see we get this nice piece of information here as well, which does include information on the T-Rex. So you can see its name is King Tyrant Lizard. Its height is 5.2 metres. Its length is 13.5 metres, its weight is 8.4 tonnes, it is a carnivore, and its habitat is Isla Nublar. So that wraps up our look at the minifigures, we'll now take a look at the set overall. Okay, so that has been your look at LEGO Jurassic Park T-Rex Rampage, right here on Jurassic Collectibles. What do you guys think of this set? Do you like it? Is it worth the £220 price tag for you? Or does it not quite hit the mark? For me, initially I was opposed to this set. I would have much rather had the visitor's centre. But after getting it in hand, seeing this colossally scaled T-Rex that is really nice and smooth and detailed, and seeing this fantastic Jurassic Park gate, I am sold. This captures the iconography of the original Jurassic Park film perfectly, capturing the clear visual assets which have the most impact on screen, and it also brings us a slew of awesome new classic minifigures. That said, as always, I really love hearing your thoughts, so make sure to leave them in the description below, and stay tuned here to Jurassic Collectibles for more reviews in the near future.